Good evening, folks. Brian here with Geomagnetic Earth Watch, Monday, June 2nd, 2025. This is a heat report for Northern California coastal region. We have some heat both in the waters and just on shore. Uh, first, let's uh, just show you the data. <clears throat> So we have several points. We have about five points. And this location here. Three hundred and six, three hundred and twenty five Kelvin. That is the brightness temperature, the irradiance at three hundred and fourteen. And a couple on land, three oh five. Uh, let's go to <clears throat> so picked up by the uh, infrared sensors you know the routine okay Google Earth um, So this is in line more and less with the uh, the black hole fracture zone, black hole fracture zone, Mendocino Ridge, Gorda Plate. Let's go take a look. So we have uh, three points in the waters. Our next one. A few yards away. Check the two on land. <clears throat> so again, I'm looking for anything that could be industry related. I know I'm not going to find it, but I'm going to mention it anyway. So, <clears throat> this is where the buoy went into motion before the axial seamount. <clears throat> there have been uh, quite a few earthquakes here. They're not listed anymore. <clears throat> This is the section of the Juan de Fuca plate that's been in motion with the ongoing uh, tremors right here. There's only 25 tremors uh, today, not even more showing. <clears throat> now to answer the question about the earthquake swarm in Idaho.
This is my desktop app. It's a global incident map. They're not showing all the earthquakes. Fair number though. Uh, so six kilometers depth. Nine kilometers. So they're all much, pretty much uh, shallow. So here is Yellowstone. <clears throat> It is believed, it is understood that the magma reservoir, which feeds the magma chamber, is below Idaho. So on some volcanic systems, you will have the uh, primary uh, volcanic, uh, volcanic chamber underneath the volcano, but that has to be filled by a reservoir deeper below. <clears throat> I did find the information years ago. I can't dig it up right now, but it's believed or understood that the reservoir is for is below Idaho for the chamber for Yellowstone. I had to back up for a minute. Let's go back here to the subduction zone or heat. So our subduction zone, this is the uh, Juan de Fuca plate, the ocean plate subducting, sliding underneath the continental plate. When it does, uh, usually around this point here, we have vibrations or tremors. Now we have the Cascadia range, which is a range of volcanoes here. So at the plate interface, which is the gap between the subducting plate and the continental plate, we can have uh, hot water and or magma that escapes and feeds the volcanoes. Hence, when there's a mega thrust earthquakes, the volcanoes will be uh, activated. However, our heat detections are right here. This is the point where you would have a uh, mega thrust earthquake. This is where our heat is showing up. Concerning. Now, I never do a forecast for the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. So the only thing I can tell you is uh, slow slip events happening on a regular basis. On the northern end, which is Seattle, Vancouver Island, used to be every 14 months. The south end, northern California, southern Oregon, used to be every 22 months. The time intervals have been shortening. So one indication that we're close to a major mega thrust event is when the intervals between slow slip events start closing in shorter and shorter and shorter. So now instead of years, we're into the months in between slow slip events. Me personally, I need to see more than one thing to suggest that we are close to a mega thrust event. One of those things would be the release of heat at the subduction zone. We've already had the buoy go in motion just outside the Gorda Plate. Now, earthquakes offshore on the Blanca or Blanco fracture zone and Docino fracture zone are nice. We like to see them there. It relieves the stress and the built up pressure. We like to see twos and threes and magnitude fours. It just, I mean, it relieves the stress. Now, I once took a look at uh, 10 years worth of tremors and earthquakes because I was looking for a pattern. There's no pattern. Sometimes the earthquakes start after a tremor event. Sometimes they start before a tremor event. So nonetheless, having earthquakes offshore, we like to see those there rather than just onshore. 
But there's been too many earthquakes at the south end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Too many. Um, as for the earthquake swarm in uh, Idaho, <clears throat> you got to step back and take a look at the overall global picture as what's been going on. We have the large heat spread that I showed you in the southern shores of Sicily. Three to four days later, Etna decides to blow her top quite massively and sends a whole bunch of stupid tourists running for their lives. Then we have the uh, 5.8 to a 6.1 Greece. At the same time, there's a 3.8 in Switzerland and also one registered 3.8 in France. That one was deleted. That could have been an echo. And then at the same time, some felt reports in Cairo. It's a lot of big magmatic pressure coming in. Magmatic pressure, mantle plumes, pushing up underneath the lithosphere in which the crust and the ocean sits upon. Please remember, we've been in a sustained, elevated geomagnetic instabilities for the past, I don't know, four days not going away anytime soon. So that's a lot of energy that's been absorbed into the outer core. And it's expanding. And so we're going to see the earthquakes, we're going to see the volcanic eruptions, we're going to see the fires. Okay, I just want to stick on those two areas. I'll probably be back.